So welcome Stephen and Thank James. You. Hello, good morning. How are you, James? So right, just uh, to get us started then, James, um, would you like to tell us how many types of microscopes there are? All right, there's um, three basic types of microscopes. There are the stereo microscopes, which, <clears throat> um, which are usually used for um, relatively low magnification purposes. Uh, it's more of a macro view, which can go up to a higher magnification, such as um, using auxiliary objectives, using auxiliary objectives yeah. and also um, changing eyepieces. Changing eyepieces. Yeah. Um, you can get all the way up to one. At 3.5. Yeah. yeah. The um, auxiliary, which is about 7.5 magnification. Mm. And for obviously for objectives as well. So we actually um, solid objects, yeah. they usually, or petri dishes. Yeah, so these are usually used for um, larger depths of field, uh, fields of view rather. Um, and my section, I guess. Uh, the other type that you'll most commonly see are the compound microscopes. Um, <clears throat> uh, these go all the way up, go from four times magnification most commonly up to 100 times, it can go further, um, but then it starts to, you start to reach the limitation of um, optical lenses. And you multiply your um, 100 times by the eyepiece. So if you've got mm. 10 times eyepiece, that gives you a thousand times magnification. Yeah. Um, then you have a hybrid, which is almost um, a combination of the two. Uh, and, and those would be the inverted microscopes. These are usually used for viewing petri dishes and liquid samples, where it just wouldn't be feasible using a standard compound microscope. Um, the beauty of these, especially in terms of um, servicing equipment yourself, is that they're actually really easy to clean. Um, they often have a glass plate at the bottom, which you can't see because my camera isn't great. They often have a glass plate on the bottom, um, obviously to keep your specimens from dripping onto your lenses, objectives rather. Um, and then the objectives are underneath and they're very easy to access. Just tip that. So when you're cleaning these, it's very, very easy and it's simple. The front elements on these are actually really quite large. Right. So with, um, with stereo microscopes as well as inverted microscopes, the three main areas. No, sorry, you can leave it there. Yeah. yeah. The three main points you'll actually be focusing on when you're maintaining it yourself would be the eyepieces, the auxiliary objectives, if you have any, or the objectives if you on the um, inverted, and the touch points. Um, one thing to be mindful of with the touch points is they're usually rubber rubberized, especially on the higher end models. So you'll want to avoid using things like um, uh, strong solvents. So you'd want to have diluted ethanol, diluted isopropanol. Um, even uh, methylated spirits can work as long as it's diluted to less than 50%. Any higher and you'll start breaking down the rubbers and it'll, it'll basically start to feel sticky and slimy constantly um, over time and then it'll break down and fall off. You don't want that. Um, Obviously, you want to keep your um, stages it clean as well. Um, can you take this away for me? Thank you, Steve. Um, one thing to note when you're moving equipment is to always hold it by um, like center mass. So right here, this would be about center mass. Um, you want to avoid holding it by the unit itself, of course, because uh, these aren't actually designed to be held, especially with the base. The bases tend to be heavier, uh, sorry, just about as heavy, if not heavier than the equipment itself. And that's because it needs to be sturdy, holds things upright for you. And that's what it's designed for. Um, right. And you can see that's actually only held on by one single screw here. And that's just for retention and not actually, it's not actually for um, structural stability. It's just for tension. 
Um, so, James, I might just interrupt here for a second sure. and just invite people, if they do have questions along the way, uh, please unmute yourself and uh, ask the question along the way. That would be terrific. All right. So with the stereo microscopes, pretty simple and easy to um, maintain. Obviously, you want to keep, keep your stage clean. The touch surface is clean. That can just be wiped uh, nice and easy. Of course, you'll want to dust your equipment off. Um, I find that using a soft brush will do. Literally, a paintbrush is the best. Um, natural fiber is better than synthetic because if you if you introduce chemicals to it, this isn't this is unlikely to get, to break down. Only um, uh, chemicals like ammonia will break it down. Um, but even then, it's pretty minor. And the problem with using synthetic is it will interact with basically all cleaning agents, it'll melt over time and you can end up finding that you're actually just smearing dissolved plastic onto your equipment one day. Um, you want to avoid brushing any optical surfaces, any of the elements. It is unlikely to scratch, but if you think about what, du what dust is actually composed of, it's basically just a pile of microscopic dirt, uh, microscopic stones and you don't want to be rubbing that around on any optical equipment so please avoid using that there um, but we will further into the presentation get on to how to clean them properly um, so yeah what's what you'll want to do is um, go over the equipment with a brush and then blow off all the um, all the agitated dust with a blower now you can use a puffer or you can use an air duster um, but definitely, definitely don't try and blow on it with your mouth because um, you could have saliva um, going onto your optics and it will make more of a mess than um, you are cleaning. All right, with, let's start with eyepieces. Eyepieces on microscopes are generally retained using a screw. Now these ones are easy because these are thumb screws. Um, if we have something like a school microscope. So this is this would be a junior model. Um, these are retained using grub screws. Now the grub screws are very, very small. So you'll actually need one of three tools. Um, you either need a micro Phillips head, micro slotted head. So that usually means it'd be one to 1.5 mils wide or if you have a Motic bottle, we like to use um, 0 0.9 mil hex keys. So very small, very easy to lose, but your unit will come with one. Um, when you're removing them, of course, you don't want to unwind it all the way, otherwise you'll lose the grub screw. That thing is only about two millimeters wide by five millimeters long, very easy to lose. Um, and if you do, um, your hopes of finding them are very slim. <laughs> <laughs> I carry a jar full of grub screws with me just in case I do the same thing. Um, one thing to be my another thing to be mindful of with eyepieces, especially in school um, settings, is that kids love to fiddle with anything that moves. I need that again. Um, and what can often happen is I'll open it. That's oh, one of the newer models. Uh, in, the, in the older models, uh, if you unscrew this, all the elements will actually just fall out. And um, there are three elements. Uh, a, a telltale way to see if the elements have been um, fiddled with is if you do a shake test, if it rattles, that's not good. Um, and if the objectives are sitting sideways or if they're uh, concave from the outside, they need to be flat. They're always flat on the outer surfaces. Um, but if it's concave, it means someone's fiddled around with it and it's been flipped. I wouldn't recommend trying to clean these. It's uh, very tedious, it's very difficult. And what will often happen is you'll put it back in and just find that it's fuzzy. It's just covered in dust because of static, because of dust that you didn't even see. Um, I would avoid trying to clean these if you can. When placing them back on, You'll want to make sure that it's retained, but not tight. Because if it's tight, 
then children will be able to actually twist these off. It'll actually leave the, the tail end of the barrel behind. That will twist off, all the elements will fall out. What you want to do is you'll actually want to back it off by half a turn and that will allow the eyepiece to turn around freely, but the children won't be able to remove it. We'll come back to um, uh, school compound microscopes. Yeah, when you're cleaning a stereo microscope, they often come with uh, an auxiliary objective. Uh, lower end models usually don't. So they actually have um, multiple lens clusters inside or, or from the lower end, uh, from the middle, middle range to the high range, you'll actually have a zoom function. Um, what happens inside is you'll actually have smaller lenses that actually uh, slide on the inside. I would not recommend trying to clean these because if if you ship them, um, it could cause quite a few problems because it, depending on the system, you'll actually have, I'm just gonna take this off before it falls off. Depending on the system, you'll either have a gearing mechanism or, let me see on this one, um, or you'll have a pulley system. And the pulley system is really easy to, to disrupt if you're not careful. And it's not something that you can just place back. You'll actually cause the one side of the, um, the mechanism to be um, misaligned and you'll get double, double vision. So I would not, I would avoid at all costs trying to clean inside here. Back on, where did I put my screw? It's still there. All right, let's bring this back. Okay, so when you're cleaning eyepieces, um, if you're not game enough to actually pull these off, what you can do is just clean the outside. You can leave it on there, you can clean the outside, and more often than not, that'll get rid of 90% of any of the dust particles that you see. If you do see dust particles inside, um, you can try blowing the inside. I wouldn't recommend trying to wipe it because some of these do have coatings on the inside and that's to help reduce um, chromatic aberrations, uh, things like that. Um, especially the higher end models, they will have some sort of coating on the inside and solvents and even physical, physically just touching it can disrupt that surface and you'll never be able to fix it. You just have to replace it. All right, let's close that up. Auxiliary objectives, they are huge. Um, as an example, I have a standard objective right here. Um, and you can see that the surface area for the frontal element is um, drastically different. Um, I will show you now how to clean an objective using cotton tips and Windex. Um, and this is, this is actually what we use. We use a... Um, 50-50 uh, solution of industrial grade window cleaner with uh, a solvent. Um, okay, so what you'll need are cotton tips. Just standard cotton tips will be fine. Um, I already have a in front of me. Um, and some cleaning cloths. You can either use um, like something like a Kim wipe, it would be a non-woven uh, tissue. Those are okay. Um, those are okay. I'm wearing a white shirt so you can't see that. Um, they're pretty good. I We like to use microfiber because it's just, uh, it, it, we find that it just works better. It, it's, it absorbs more solution. You can use that to clean your equipment a bit better. It goes further. Um, one thing to note is that you never want to wipe any optical surfaces with uh, a dry wipe because these inherently have, will have fibers that actually, um, that will stick out, I can't even see that, will stick out perpendicular to um, the surface of the material and that can cause scratching. Um, so with your solution, you can either uh, spray it. I should wear a, bl a black shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you can try uh, just spraying it directly onto the cloth. Don't spray it directly onto the equipment. It will go everywhere and it'll start seeping into 
any little gaps and you won't notice it until later where um, where it'll just actually get in it'll penetrate between the the gaps and evaporate inside causing hazing and you won't be able to clean that because it'll involve you having to take apart objectives um, you'll have to clean the head somehow and I would just avoid especially during basic maintenance I would just avoid opening anything that's not firmly attached. Um, so what you want to do first is blow off any loose debris. Do not use a brush. <laughs> uh, you can use a cloth, but I prefer using cotton tips um, when I'm cleaning these surfaces. I'm going to use a, um, an auxiliary objective because they're, they're quite large. They're easy to see on the camera and I can show you exactly what I'm doing. And I'm also going to use a giant swab. Um, so these aren't <laughs> these aren't the ones that we use. These are the ones we use. Uh, you can see the size difference; it's huge. Um, but for training purposes, I'll show you how to use these. Now, you don't want to soak them because, again, you'll run into the issue of see that white shirt. Um, again. You don't, want to, uh, you don't want to soak them because what will happen is it'll oversaturate it and you'll have fluid that actually gets, um, that will get, that will penetrate between the, um, the lens elements and the casing. And again, it will cause hazing over time and you want to avoid that. But if you do, like I did, because I wasn't paying attention, if you do over wet it, what you can do is grab another cotton tip and just dip it on that. Because you want it to be damp, but you don't want it to be soaking wet. Put it off to the side. When you're wiping these, you don't want to just um, wipe, you know, because the problem with that is you can often smear any uh, dirt and debris. And again, that may cause scratching. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to actually pick it up. So um, I'm exaggerating right now. It's, it's going to be kind of like a scooping motion, but all I'm actually doing is twisting. So you want to twist away from the direction that you're moving. And so it should look something like this. And what you're doing is uh, making the cotton tip rotate and pick and lift things up instead of dragging it. Um, you don't need to go in, in any particular direction. Um, personally, this is just how I've always done it. Um, I always go from left to right, covering the entire surface. Rotate, do it again. Um, you don't want to use this too much, otherwise it'll build up too much dirt and you'll start scratching. Um, so you can dispose of it, grab another if you need to keep cleaning. Um, and when you get to the edges, you also want to wipe in a rotating motion as well. Um, so let's say you're going in an anti-clockwise direction. I don't know if this is being reflected. Um, if you're going in an anti Sorry, clockwise direction, you also want to rotate in a clockwise direction. So it pulls and lifts dirt out of the crevices for you. I find that when you're cleaning these crevices, they tend to have a lot of buildup. You don't want to re you don't want to run this through again. So if you've done one rotation, just drop it, grab another. Um, it's better to go through more cotton tips than potentially scratch an objective because that's permanent, it's very expensive and these are disposable and cheap. Okay, so that's pretty much all you have to do when it comes to the stereo microscopes. The same procedure applies for eyepieces. So again, doing that wiping, uh, picking up motion, and you can go around the edges as well. You can use cloths, but when you're using a cloth, you can't quite get the same action so I would avoid doing that. What you can use the cloth for is drying it. So let's say you've just, next thing. Um, what you can do is you can, um, you can do your initial wipe and clean. And then if you've still got residue, you can just wipe it off with the cloth or even better, use a cotton tip. You wouldn't use a tissue, would you John? Well, it depends. Um, and I think I'd get, I'll get to that when we get to the um, compound microscope because a lot of our clients will be using it for um, oil immersion. Okay. Yep. Um, 
I'd suggest removing the eye cup as well when you're cleaning in here because you'll find that fluid will be, build up underneath it. And it will... How about lens wipes? Um, lens wipes are okay. Grab my mouse. I just want to make sure I haven't missed any other questions. Uh, lens wipes are actually okay, depending on what type. If they are the wet wipes, they're good because you are less likely to scratch or mar your optical surfaces. Uh, the Kim wipes though, you don't want to just use those dry, depending, depending on the situation, um, which we will get to when I move over to the compound microscopes. Um, so you want to remove the eye cup first before you start cleaning because for one thing, dirt and debris will actually build up in there over time. And you'll find that as you're cleaning, you just keep finding more and more dirt. It's because this is usually the source. Place that back on. Yes, awesome. All righty. That's okay, look at it. All right. Um, so stereo microscopes, pretty basic, pretty easy. All right, now for the big boy. Um, compound microscopes. This is actually one of our high-end models. Um, now there's a lot more going on here. There's a, there's a lot more glass and there are a lot more moving parts that you need to look at. Um, we've already covered off eyepieces, um, and we'll touch on objectives again. Um, one thing that I haven't covered would be the trinocular head. Now, these often don't really need to be, you won't often need to clean these, but if you do remove the, um, the camera often, and if you have to move it between pieces of equipment, you might need to dust it. Definitely don't brush them because, again, you might scratch it, scratch the surface. I have seen trinocular heads where um, it looks like it's barely ever been used, but then you look inside and it's got these brush marks and, well, you know exactly what would cause that. So just blow the dust out and with the cap as well, just in case it's stuck to the inside and just drop the cap back on in the correct orientation. Um, Ready. Tighten that up. Okay, so with most compound microscopes, the objectives will be on a turret like this. Um, if you're on a basic model, maybe it's just one or two and it's just it's it's firmly attached. Um, to clean these objectives, I'm gonna start with a larger one so I can actually grab it. Okay, I'm gonna take this hundred times objective off. So Make sure that the stage is clear because you don't want to break anything. Make sure you also drop it and take a cloth just in case and place it on the stage just in case you drop any of your objectives. That'll help you from, that'll help avoid damaging the objective. Um, the drop itself is unlikely to damage it, but if it were to hit the slide holder, it could scratch or even crack the element if you're unlucky enough. So, all you have to do is just twist it off, but as so happens pretty commonly, um, it might be a bit tight. So you'll want to use something like an elastic band. Again, this is an over-exaggerated size. I just happened to find it and I figured it's easier for you to, to see it on the camera. Um, one of those elastic bands that you, that you find holding your mail together is actually perfect. Um, and in fact, my mum, um, collects them so she can open jars with them. You just stick them over the, the lid of the jar and it helps you to get a grip. Um, so dad's out of a job. Um, so just like with a jar, you can put it around the barrel of the, of the objective and it'll help you get a grip. It's a shame it's not that easy for millennials. Well, technically I'm a millennial. Anyway, moving on. So you can take the objective off just like that. And uh, as I showed you before, you clean it using the rotating method. The problem with, uh, with compound microscope objectives is the frontmost element is only about I don't know, two millimeters wide. Now, not everybody has eagle eyes um, like Stephen over here. So 
um, us mere mortals will have to use a magnifying lens. Now, not many people know this, but you can actually take your objective, reverse it, and it becomes like a jewelry loop, um, except even better because it has a higher magnification. And what you can do is using your thumb as like a, a stabilization point, you can actually zoom in and look at the surface of the front element. And that can help you inspect it. Uh, if it's clean, don't bother touching it because you'll probably just end, end up introducing more dust. Um, so yeah, that's that makes it easier to clean these and um, make sure you dust it out before you place it back on. All right, so with these high-end microscopes, they actually have a nice, lovely feature where you can actually just unscrew the head. Am I using the right one? No, I'm not. You can actually just remove the nose piece. Come on, James, we practice this. All right, there we go. Just a couple of turns should be enough. Any more, and you might actually lose it. And nose piece slash turret should just come out. Very handy. Um, and it will save you quite a bit of time and efforts when trying to service your own microscopes. All right, so it's all laid out there for you. You can um, go through all of your objectives. It's fine, I right fixed that one. You can check them all out individually and you can clean them all individually. What I recommend when cleaning these is to avoid using cotton tips for multiple objectives. Um, again, they're cheap, they're plentiful, and it'll help you avoid um, moving contamination from one objective onto another. Um, yeah, and it'll help, help you avoid uh, scratching the optical surfaces. Now you'll want to dust this off a little bit. Um, I've tipped it down so that the, um, there we go, the viewport is tipping down so that when you blow the dust, it blows it away because you don't want to have it tipping inside because obviously you don't want dust on the inside of your objectives. Um, these often come with filters as well. You can clean those while you're there. Um, I suggest only dusting these as well because especially with um, like polarizers, the polarizing sheet is actually usually made out of um, PET and and or polypropylene. Some of them, some of the older ones, can be made of. I can't think of the material, but it will break down if you use solvents. So I would avoid touching it if you don't have to. Just dust it off and leave it at that. All right, tighten it up. Uh, one thing to note is that when you're tightening these, make sure that you only tighten it to about finger tight. So you can see that I'm, I'm just resting on my finger and I'm just going to push down my finger. That's literally all it takes. You don't want to do any more because what can happen is you can cross thread the, the grub screw. You can actually push this out of alignment and it's not designed to be pushed back. It's meant to, it's just designed to retain. Um, and that's all it's meant to do. Again, holding it by its frame. All right, next thing, working our way down, you'll want to clean the stage. This is pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, but one thing you should do is make sure that you also lower your condenser because you don't want to be wiping grime directly onto it. Um, so give it a quick wipe, nice and easy, nice and simple. Um, you can also move the slide holder. I forgot to loosen these beforehand. Let's pretend I removed them. Give it a wipe, give it a clean. Often you'll find oil underneath it. Um, I just remember the uh, lens wipe question. Okay, so for lens wipes, uh, the reason why I say you should avoid using them dry is because it will end up just smearing dirt around. And it's, it's essentially like smearing microscope, microscopic gravel on glass. And uh, you don't wanna do that, it'll scratch it. One use I um, I think you could, sorry, 
The only time I'd say that you can use dry wipes is when you're using oil immersion um, objectives and there's oil on it. You can use that to wipe off the excess. That's perfectly fine because technically it's not dry wiping. It's already got oil on it. All you're doing is just removing that. It's absorbing some. Um, there you go. You, you'll want to follow it up with uh, some sort of solvent afterwards though, because what can happen is the oil will build up Where's my pretend objective? There it is. Um, the oil will build up in the crevices and over time it'll actually polymerize and turn into sludge. That's really, that just literally just won't wipe off. And then over time it'll harden and you'll essentially have a plastic ring on the edge of your objective and it'll start to slowly build up and creep in and you'll, you'll start to notice that you have a kind of a, not a halo effect, a vignette um, in your view. So if you start noticing that the edges, the edges of your view are starting to darken or haze and it's just slowly creeping in, that's usually what causes it. Another thing that causes it is excessive oil that's built up inside, inside the objective itself. Now, this happens over time if, if let's say, you're a vet or... Um, a pathologist where you're you're checking a lot of samples day in day out let's say you're going through hundreds in a week you sh you will expect oil to build up over that time and um, the only way to really to prevent that would be to clean it fastidiously problem is not everyone has time for that um, what can happen is the oil will actually get up inside the objective and it'll go up around and back down inside to where all the um, all the lenses are all the elements are that'll cause hazing as it evaporates um, it'll polymerize you just can't clean it um, and yeah it'll just gunk up your lens it'll just stop looking good and no matter what you do you can't clean it anymore that will cause the objective to have to be replaced um, and a lot of the time a lot of the time um, it's because of that. Uh, one test I like to do when I'm on site at a, um, with a customer's microscope, if I see that there's hazing, I actually press down on the retraction mechanism. So I'm just using a cloth so I don't, I don't uh, um, dirty up the element. One test I like to do is to press down on the retraction um, the retraction mechanism. And if you can hear metal scraping, that often tells you that it's perfectly clean on the inside. There's no oil buildup on the inside. So you can go right ahead and start cleaning it and it should clear up. Um, I do that test because I have tried to clean an objective once for half an hour straight. I went through a quarter of a box of um, cotton tips and it just it took forever and I, I was thinking to myself this is dirty I can't get it clean what's going on I looked at the surface it was perfect and then I realized oh wait it must be filled up with oil because when I tipped it back over and left it for about 10 minutes came back to it I noticed that oil seeped back out and went over the objective it was gross and it had to be replaced um, higher end objectives shouldn't have that issue because uh, for one thing, they're actually better sealed. And one way to tell if it's actually sealed up well is that the retraction is much slower. You'll, you won't even hear the metal components scraping on each other because it's sealed up so well that the air is cushioning it. Um, so you don't generally run into issues with the higher end ones so long as you clean them like normal. All right, I hope that answers your uh, lens wipes question. To minimize that stuff. Okay. All right. So after you're finished with the stage, raise it, and you'll want to give your condenser a clean. So loosen that up. Lower your condenser so you don't um, you don't contact the stage. It can actually scrape the front element. Um, even though. Even though this isn't technically a an optical an, opt, an optical piece, it can 
scratches on the surface will show up as um, artifacts in the backgrounds of your images. So let's say you're looking at uh, cell cultures, you'll start to see there's a weird shadow. Um, so if you have phase, it, it'll start to show up as a weird shadow that you just can't get rid of. No matter, no matter how much you try and align it, it just, it just won't disappear. Um, so that's why you want to avoid scratching that surface. Oh, that's right. We had a problem with this last time, didn't we? Correct. I was just thinking, this isn't the one I practiced. There is something that you, you recommend that the um, average lab tech, normal lab tech should do that actually get to that stage cleaning the condenser? Or you oh, look, for the, um, I was just going to show, show how to do that, but actually, you've got a really good point. Let me just put this back in place correctly. As an average lab tech, you can actually just uh, take a shortcut, raise it up, and then just go in with a cotton tool. That will work. Um, if you're a pathologist, on the other hand, let me take it from this one. If you're a pathologist, on the other hand, and you use a lot of oil, it will start dripping down onto the stage onto the um, condenser. Now this is a phase condenser, um, very different to the Abbey condenser. Um, when you're trying to clean these, uh, especially if you use a lot of immersion oil, you'll actually want to start with a wipe down on the outer surfaces. Double check the bottom, make sure it hasn't made its way into the iris ports. So you'll want to close up the iris and oh, see how that looks. Um, should be dry. Uh, a little bit of oil is okay, but when it starts getting to the point where you have buildup, um, might be a good idea to either um, call us in to service it or maybe look at replacing it because it will polymerize, it will seize up, and you'll start to have certain um, certain models will have leaves that actually jam up and then it'll fall out. It's just it's a it's a nightmare to fix. Um, but yeah. And then clean the, the frontmost element last um, with a cotton tip or a wet cloth um, and then put it back. All right. Now we're basically reaching the end here. Um, what you want to do for your light source is um, either just uh, give it a dust and a wipe, that should suffice. Uh, but you also want to check to make sure that no oil has made its way onto the iris blades. Um, and the way to see that is just to turn on the light, take a look from the side, then look directly on top of it because it will be very bright. Um, and you'll see some oil residues if there are any. If there is some, you'll, you'll want to replace it pretty quickly because if that oil is left there, it will start evaporating and once it starts evaporating, it'll cause this area to haze. Um, it'll go up into your Abbey condenser or your phase condenser into your objectives and eventually up into the head and cause all kinds of issues. Uh, you don't want that. Evaporating oil is not good for you. Um, one last thing we should cover are um, common school microscope issues. So one... Um, Actually, there's, there's really only two. Um, the first one was the eyepiece. You already covered that earlier. Make sure you tighten it up so much so that it retains it, but doesn't hold it. Because if you start holding it, kids can twist that loose, all the elements will fall out, and you'll need a new eyepiece. Um, and the second issue, it's very common, is the, um, the focus. Now, with these older, or even the um, the the junior school microscope models will have separate focusing modules, uh, focusing knobs. Now on a standard microscope, oops, light one, um, the mechanism will be all in the one cluster. So you'll have both the coarse focus and the fine focus all together. Um, 
the way the system works is that there's there's a bunch of planetary gears and a clutch system in there um, and that isn't necessarily the best thing to be using for junior school students because literally they can pick it up knock it and that'll bugger up the entire mechanism it'll seize it up or it'll bend the shaft and it's, it'll it'll need to repair it's uh, very difficult to repair with the junior school models it has separate focusing systems. It has the course focus here. That's on a rack and pinion. This is very robust. I've actually seen ones where the frame is cracked from someone obviously dropping it or God knows it would have taken a lot of force. Uh, they've dropped it and the focusing system was still intact. The knob had broken off. It's really good. It's very, very robust. And then it has a, a separate fine focus adjustment. Now this isn't a rack and pinion. No, it's not a rack and pinion. It's a screw system. So it'll actually reach a limit at some stage. Um, and the, the common issue that I find with some schools is that they'll say that the microscope no longer focuses. The reason being is that they can't acquire it. The kids are, um, the kids are winding the course focus up to the highest point and then trying to use the fine, the fine focus to adjust to it. But they, they just can't find it. They think it's not focusing. But that usually is because um, the fine focus has been wound either too high or too low. And simple way of checking that is to bring it up in front of you and you see this silver portion here and silver portion there. Um, well, you can tell that it's, all, it's wound all the way up this way. What you can do is just wind it back. It should take about nine full turns to get to the middle because it's, it's roughly 18 to 20 turns to go from one direction to the other. All you want to do is just wind it back to the middle. There we go. Now you've got the same amount of silver here and here. Um, and that means the uh, focusing system is right in the middle middle of its range. Um, that, usually, that usually fixes up any of those issues. Um, the other way to fix it is to adjust the, the focus limit. So it'll this grub screw right here, yeah, you can see it. Um, that actually adjusts the height, the maximum height that the stage is able to go up to. I wouldn't recommend that because if you raise it too high, then kids will be smashing their specimens right into the objectives. Um, and well, you don't want kids in broken glass. Um, not good. I think that brings us to the end. Cool. So James, uh, great tips there. Uh, we've just got someone who's uh, unmuted. So, but if uh, someone would like to offer any questions, please either put them through in the chat or unmute yourself and ask a question. We'd love to hear from you. or even any comments, something that you've learnt. If you're down the track, you can also email us. If you want to email questions, we can get back to you fairly quickly. So James and myself. No, that's great. Well, we'll wind it up there. And uh, thank you, everyone, for participating. A great audience there. And Ron says thank you, James and Stephen. So uh, well done. Thank you, Ron. While you're there, Ron, we'll um, drop in to see you next week. We're dropping new microscopes off to probably Wednesday if that's suitable. Thank you. Oh, a very convenient Zoom session for you both there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no worries. Thanks uh, once again, boys. And uh, we'll look forward to a, another presentation in the near future. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Peter. Okay. Thanks, Bye, guys. Have a nice day. Bye bye. bye. Do we leave now? What's happening? <laughs> There's just a couple of uh, comments, just probably thank yous. I'll just run through them. Yeah. Okay. I will just stick around just in case anyone has questions. Yeah. Uh, what Good. solvent do you use to clean the lens? Oh, literally um, ethanol, 
or isopropanol. That's all you really need. I would avoid using methylated spirits, but some places do use that. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, just more thank yous. Excellent. Well, I think uh, people will and truly appreciated uh, your presence there today, guys. So um, that's good and a great job done. Yeah. Well done. Thank you, Peter. No.